بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن يطع الله والرسول فأولئك مع الذين أنعم الله عليهم من النبيين والصدق والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله و علا آله آل الله من الان الى لقاء يوم رحمة الله اما بعد فقال الله تبارك و تعالى في القرآن الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله اسوة حسنة صدق الله العلي العظيم تري I would like to discuss about the social seerah of the great prophet peace be upon him. As I have written a book by this name, so I have collected some practical things from the life of prophet peace be upon him. So I would like to tell you and to share with you brothers and sisters who are following and watching this program. First of all, I would like to say to you Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And now I'm going to start uh, the first uh, class in the first uh, discussion and lecture for this program. Uh, of course, it will be with the beginning of uh, my discussions as introduction for my discussions and with details I would like to bring some practical life from the life of Prophet peace be upon him and it is very important for us as Muslim people to know and to practice as Prophet peace be upon him said to us and he advised us that we should do that and we should uh, offer on our practical life should be according to the life of Prophet peace be upon him. Uh, as introductions I would like to tell you those who are watching this program that uh, human being they are a social being and they would like to live together and this living together it is either due to the nature of human being that uh, naturally mankind likes to come together and to live together or it is for because of the needs and necessities that human being they have and they face many needs and necessities and if they want to fulfill their needs and necessities it is necessary for them that they should come together and they should make a society in that society they should live together and they should uh, cooperate with each other and they should uh, fulfill the needs of each others anyway as uh, you know Islam also emphasized on social uh, things it means that uh, Islam does not emphasize only for those things which belong to a person himself or it belongs to individually uh, things but Islam uh, thought and emphasized and have teachings for social things also and those people who come together and they make a gathering and they live in a society 
of course, according to their live in the societies and according to their needs in the society. So there are some rules, and these rules are uh, said and narrated in Islam, and Islam uh, has uh, special rules for this matter. So today I want to uh, tell you only the things which are as introductions and these are not of course the main things and the first thing which i would like to tell you for you brothers and sisters is this that almighty allah brought for us a good and excellent example that example is the example of prophet peace be upon him as almighty allah said in his great book in the holy quran and he said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا O oh believers, O oh people, I brought for you an excellent example in the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. At first step, it is our duty that we should know about the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And we should get information from the life of Prophet, peace be upon him. And we should study deeply the life of the Prophet and collect the behavior and good moral of Prophet, peace be upon him. It is the first step that, belong, that belongs to the knowledge in it is our uh, duty that we should increase our knowledge, we should increase our information about the life of Prophet, peace be upon him. But we should not stop here, and it is not enough that we should, if we study the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, if we get information about the life of Prophet, peace be upon him, we become proud and we say that it is enough. No, it is not enough, but we should go further. There is the second step, which is more important than the first step. What is that? Ya Habib Allah, Ya Nabi Allah, Ya Rasul Allah, Ya Rasul Allah. That is that we should practice in those things, in those information that we have collected from the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Then the second step we should do and practice according to those informations and according to those teachings that Prophet, peace be upon him, he said to us and he advised us, we also as a Muslim, we should do and we should be the Prophet, peace be upon him. So I think it is very necessary. That's why I would like to tell you brothers and sisters and to bring some stories and some teachings from the practical life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, as a model, as an example. And then, when we understood that, we should try to obey that. We should try to do and practice according to those things that we have collected from the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And you know it, that it came in Holy Quran, as I told you, that Almighty Allah says, and Almighty um, Allah, He appreciates His Prophet and says, Innaka la'ala khuluqin azim, O Prophet, you have and you possess the great and the best behavior and the best moral. So that's why it is necessary that we should know that if Almighty Allah said in his book, 
in the Quran that Prophet peace be upon him he poses the best and the great moral and he has the good moral so it is our duty it is our job that we should know that at first and the second we should put that in practice and we should do according to that and we should follow our prophet peace be upon him some of the people unfortunately they do not have enough information from the life of prophet that's why they say and they blame our prophet they say that prophet he was very uh, harsh and he was uh, not a good person so why the some of the pagans and some of the unbelievers they blame our prophet it is because of the lack of their knowledge it is one cause because they do not uh, study deeply the life of our prophet and they do not have enough information from the life of our prophet that's why they blame that and the second reason maybe it belongs unfortunately to we muslim because the muslim themselves they do not do they do not obey and follow their prophets and they commit suicide and they kill the others some of the muslim are like this and they lie so that's why they say that if the follower of the prophet is like this so maybe the prophet himself also was like this while it's not true because they did not study deeply the life of the prophet that's why they blame these things and they say these things about our prophet peace be upon him so it is our duty as a follower of the prophet peace be upon him that we should study deeply the history and the history of our prophet in the life of our prophet and then we should practice those things of prophet about the society about uh, living to the neighbors about treatment of us to our kinship and our relationships and also about uh, behaving as to the children and to our family how was prophet peace be upon him uh, was uh, doing and how was his uh, treatment and behavior with his neighbors with his enemies with those who are unbelievers with those who are their children with those who are their family so we should know that at first step we should get information about those things and the second step when we understood deeply we should put that in practice if we do that of course then our society will be a good society and we will have a good life and we will be very kind with each other and all the muslim will love each other and every day passes the love will increase among the society among the muslim society nowadays if we do not have such a kind society it is because of this that we did not study deeply the history in the life of our prophet and secondly as we do not have enough information about the life of our prophet then of course we do not have anything to practice we do not have any example to do according to that as it it came in the holy quran almighty allah says a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim fa bima rahmatin min allah lintalahum walaw kunta 
فضن غلیز القلب لنفض من حولک Almighty Allah says it is because of the mercy of Almighty Allah that Almighty Allah brought a very good and gentle behavior for Prophet peace be upon him and our Prophet he's very soft and he's very gentle that's why the people came around him the people like to come near the prophet and to use from the knowledge of the prophet and to see the practical life of the prophet so it is because of the good behavior and gentle behavior of our prophet and Almighty Allah addressed the Prophet. It is the mercy of Allah that because of this mercy, because of this blessing, you possess a very gentle and good and norm and soft moral. So if you were harsh, if you were rough, if you were hard hearted, so of course those people which were living near you, they will not come near you and they will escape and they will go away and they will leave you alone. So it is very important that we know these things because our Prophet, peace be upon him, he was a very gentle man and it is very necessary for us to know about the life of the Prophet and I think it is uh, very important for Muslim people. So in uh, this saying, I will emphasize on two things. First thing which I will tell you is about the practical life of our Prophet. How was practically our Prophet was doing? and behaving with the others. And the second thing, which is very important, and I will tell you, is the narrations and the advice of our Prophet to others. And these two things are important. First thing is also important. And the second thing is also important. Because you know that the sayings and teachings it is not separate from the practice. I mean to say this thing and to tell you that our Prophet, peace be upon him, those things that he was narrating and advising to the others, to the believers and to all the people in mankind, so he was putting those things in his practice also. So it is very important that we should know that and we should do and we should obey those things and we should our practical life should be according to the sayings of the Prophet peace be upon him. Further I will tell you about these matters that uh, there are different cultures in society and we know the meaning of the culture. Culture is the learn aspects of home in society everything which we do in the society it means that we have learned these things from the society and everything that we have learned from the society that is a culture that is a part of a culture so according to different cultures there are different behaviors there are different world views. There are different models and examples for the treatment of the people.
للنبي. So it is very necessary that we should know our culture, our Islamic culture, that uh, Prophet peace be upon him made this culture. And this culture is came from the saying of uh, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Allah, he advised and said to the Prophet, and Prophet brought that culture for us. So it is also very important that we should know this thing as an introduction. That there are different cultures. Some of the cultures, they emphasize only about the life which belong to this world. They try to cooperate with each other. They try to progress and they try to be developed. But all these things will be limited in this world. They would like to use from this world the benefit of this world, the material things which are in this world as much as they can because they do not believe in hereafter and they only believe in this life so of course they will try from the morning up to uh, up to the night only for this world in this life which they have in in this world but in islam and our prophet said that life is not only the life of this world, but the real life is the life which will be started after we pass away from this world. That is the life and the hereafter. But again Islam said, again prophet said that these two lives these two, two worlds, they have a link to each other. And there are a relation to each other. It means that the, world, the life of this world is not separated from the life of the hereafter. That's why there is a very famous saying from the Prophet, peace be upon him, who says, Ad-dunya mazra'atul akhira. Life in this world, in this dunya, is the agriculture for the hereafter. Whatever you cultivate in this world, you will harvest in the hereafter. And you will see the fruit of that in the hereafter. So it means that we make our hereafter, the life in the hereafter in this world. If we be good in this world, if we are be and follow the good things which Prophet said, which is in the life of the Prophet, if we follow according to the life of the Prophet, of course we will make a very good plus for us, for ourselves in the hereafter. But if we do not follow that, but if we do not go in the way which Almighty Allah said, in the way which Islam said, in the way which our Prophet emphasized and said that you should be that way and you should keep that way, if we do not follow that way, it means that we will have a very bad life in the hereafter. There is a saying from Almighty Allah who says some of the people always wants and wish from Almighty Allah that uh, Oh Allah, you give us only the benefit, the material things in this world. And they do not think about the hereafter. And of course, they will their hand will be empty in the hereafter and they do not have anything in hereafter. 
because they themselves want these things. But there are another group of the people that they say, O oh, Almighty Allah gave for us the blessing and the good things in this world and as well as in the hereafter and keep us away from the fire of the hell which will burn us. So these people, they always try a lot to have a good life. And of course, they will make a good life for themselves in the hereafter also. So if we want to be successful in those two worlds, both in this world and the same as the case in the hereafter. So it is the way that we should follow the good things. We should follow the good teachings. We should follow the excellent example. What is that excellent example that we should follow that? That is the life of our prophet, peace be upon him. So God willing, in next uh, lecture, we will talk about the social, big, the, the social things for uh, our life in the beginning of the social communication. That what was the advising of the prophet in this regard? And how, we should, sh how should we communicate with each other? And how we should live in the society calmly, soundly, in a good way, till we be successful both in the society and the same is the case in hereafter. Inshallah, you brothers and sisters follow this program and we will talk about the life of the Prophet together and we will use from the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much. Allahumma ahmilna fi sufun najatik wa matta'na biladhidh munajatik وأوردنا حياض حبك وأذقنا حلاوة ودك وقربك واجعل جهادنا فيك وهمنا في طاعتك وأخلص نياتنا في معاملتك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين